we are going to go one step further and uh, the topic for today is OBJ Open. So if you remember when we were trying to understand OBJ Browse, we, we saw that if we have more than one record to be you know, accessed, then we use OBJ Browse and using OBJ Browse, we can fetch multiple records, we can fetch multiple records and bring it on to the uh, clipboard and as well as on the user interface is something which we saw we did obj browse and yesterday uh, like day before yesterday we saw what is obj save all about so one thing i had recommended initially when we started our classes is uh, trying to get some understanding about what is sql all about the sequential query language where you can use that to query the database that is something very important so today's session will be slightly longer if it is too long i will try to send a new link onto oh, group so if you guys are uh, done meeting on our and then if there is any other session complete it in today's session it might go slightly overboard because we have quite a bit to cover okay so i am in my application i will log into my application all right so, and today's topic we are seeing is obj open so we have seen obj browse obj browse was used to you know if you have to fetch more than one record we used obj browse and we fetched the records and we understood how exactly records can be fetched and uh, what can be done by checking those records something which we understood now obj open is a method in activity which is used to you know uh, access for our for example if you have to open one single record from the database then we will be using obj open we will try to understand how we can do that today and also another method which i want to introduce you to is page pop one is obj open and another is page pop we will try to see what exactly can be done with those Open and page copy method. Two and three. We are trying to do this today. Just a slight over the news here. So, to access or to open one single record, we can use this OBJ open method. And to see what exactly can be done. With respect to that, we will try to implement a small feature. And while doing that implementation, I'll help you understand how exactly we will be using OBJ Open method. Okay. So to start that, first I will need some data to play with. Some data is something which I need to play with. And to do that, what I will do, I'll go back to my mm, developer studio, go to data types. And last time when we were trying to create, whenever we created a customer flow, we got a customer ID, right? There was a C-9001-8001, some ID was getting generated, yes or no? We saw that, right? We saw that it was creating sample IDs, uh, the PYID which it was creating along with first name, last name and other records, yes or no? We did see that. So there is a customer table. Let us try to see what do we have in this. Whenever we are creating any new uh, on this customer table, yes or no, using OBJ save, we saved the work objects we created here. Do we agree? Didn't we create that and save it here? on this table in the last class that's what we did we created and then we saved that data here if you see records here you will see bunch of data available here 
for the work objects we have created. Let's try to add some more data because we are going to play with this data today and we know we also understand that in the database this is nothing but one table which got created yes or no? and the data which is there in this thing is going to be saved in that table. Did we see that in the last class? Right. Whenever we create a data type here, Pega automatically creates a class for us, a data class and under which it will create a table and it is going to add that. So all I, all I want to do right now is I want to add few more details to this. I want to add few more work object IDs so that I can have a bunch of data to play with. So I will add a couple more records. Okay, This we created the flow and this got added. Through the flow we were adding that using obj save. Now I want to do something by manually. So manually I am inserting some records. Let's see. So I'll add the leader. Okay, in the same way, I'll add one more record. I'll add one more record here. See, we have from zero to also. Like this, so I have around one, two, three, four records, and of which customer ID is my primary key. Why? Right? Because we have specified that there, because of which this is the table. So, this is the existing table, I'm just modifying it. All I want to do today is I want to see how exactly I will be using OBJ open and how can we implement a requirement. The requirement I want to implement today is I want to build a screen in that screen. For example, if you if you have seen uh, a search screen, if you are if you are already an existing user, for example, on Facebook, if you have to look up for a friend, what do you do? You go in the search, then the list comes out. Yes or no? The search functionality. Do we do that? Same thing is what you do in YouTube also. For example, in YouTube, if you have to go and look for something, you will you will give a search. In the search will give you a criteria or your question or your query and then the results will come out. Similarly, what we want to do today is we want to build a user interface or a screen where the user should be able to provide the customer ID and the details should be displayed to him. For all the existing customers, we should be able to provide those details and we should be able to see, you know, if those data details are popping up. So all that we have done so far, opened the existing customer table and added two records. Yes or no? Just these two records is what we have added. Perfect. So now I feel like I have sufficient records to play with. And so what I will do now as a next step, I want to create a page property which is of type customer table and is sitting in my work. Let's do that. For this customer table, I want to create a page property. How can I do it? I can go to my work class, right? I can come to the work class, right click here. We have done this when we understood pages do or perform creating single pages and how exactly that can be created. I am showing that same thing again today. From the work class, right click on the work class, click create and from the data model come to property here we are trying to create a page but to do that we have to first create a property under this particular class so this should give us a form where it will be asking for the property name i know that this is going to be a page so i will be giving the page name This will be a customer page. All I want to do is I want to create a search functionality with the data I have available. I want to be able to search for 
a customer ID and I should be able to see the details of that customer. That's what I want to achieve today. So I am going to call this as customer page. Okay. okay. Under work class, I am creating it. If you see, I have chosen property. Though we are saying we are going to create a page, the initiation will happen through creating a property on the work class or on data model. Anywhere you can right click and say create property, and then you'll get this form. All you have to do is right click here on the data model. Just on the click there with me. Sorry. And click on create. Right click on data model, click on create and choose property. That's what you have to do. Here I have chosen cust page. Okay. See here and I choose property. I clicked on this property. This form came up where I provided a name called cust page. It's going to be part of auto insurance application. I will say create and open. Going further, like these things, I assume that you guys have already understood, and I'll be you know slightly moving faster, or else it will kind of pull us back in the curriculum. We won't be able to complete what we have intended to do. So here, I get the op option to change this property to a page. As soon as I give a name and click OK, this is a form which pops up where it tells me the property type is text. But I want a page here, so I have to change here. I have to click change next to the property type and then choose single page. Why? Because this is a page which will hold, hold single value properties from the customer table. That is why I am creating this page under work class. I created a single page. The page is defined uh, on, on the customer table class which means that whatever properties are there on customer table they can be stored on top of this page right a page is a container for single value properties yes or no see i am choosing my customer table class do we agree a page is a container for single value properties right py work page for example haven't we seen that guys Yes, no. Perfect. So I know things might find too less. One day holiday and then everyone keeps like this is something which you have never heard of. Happens because you don't have you're not practicing enough is what it means. If you feel like oh this is something which I already read through or is it confusing, the pure reason is you have not been practicing. There's no rocket sense in that. So that is something which we will have to do. So once I create the page property, I want to build a small section from where I can uh, perform. I can, I can give a, a, a customer ID and I can I should be able to perform so. To do that, from the user interface category on the work class, I will create a section. Under user, user interface category, we do have section type. Yes or no? All the sections go under user interface category. Right. I'm thinking right click on user interface and I'm saying section. All I want in this particular section is just understand how I design this section. So it will help you understand how section designing happens actually. All I want to do in this section is I want to be able to give the customer ID and be able to search. So I will call this custom. System, part of auto insurance system. Perfect. Create and open. Perfect. So now, once you are inside, you will get a form where you will see a blank layout. Of course, once you Desktop, you have to click on convert to full section editor because you will get multiple options there using which you can edit this particular Thank 
in the flow forecast table. So all we have done so far is added few more records to the customer table, created a customer page, right, which will be holding values for the customer ID, first name, last name, for that we have created a page and we created a section so far. Let me convert it to full section editor, submit. This will help me design the section with all the features which Preda provides as part of user interface design. Loading slightly slower today. Okay, so it loaded me the section. Now, what will I want to do? I want to change the format of this layout to inline grid. Why we will understand that? So, see that these all these options are there. All you have to do is create a sample section, change all these formats, and understand what does it offer you on UI. There's no specific design which is good for everything and something which is not good for something, nothing like that. Depending upon the requirement, you will be using this. So in the format, I'm seeing I want it to be inline grid double. Okay. And I'll say okay. Submit. Okay. And within this, I want to drag and drop another layout. And this thing should be as we have done if you see our sections plus exactly similar to that is what we are trying to do. If you have queries, you can anytime go back to that and take a look at that. Other and then I will say start with labels line to left. So this is done. In this, what do I have to search? If you see, for example, if you have to look up for a certain user on Facebook, you will have you have to give the name there. But here we are not searching based on name. We are searching here based on ID. So which, which is customer ID. I want to access that. How can I do that? It's a text input, right? It's a text input property. All I have to do is from the data capture category, if you see here, I have to just pull text input drop it here okay it gave me text input from the configuration you have to point to that property right how do i point to that property this is the work class but that property is present in data class of course to hack that what we did we created a customer page did we create that under work class sir no Yes or no, right? Did we create this customer page today under work plus? Why did we create that? Because the properties on the customer table are not accessible here because we are in work class. The section is in work class. You can't access those properties. But the way to access them is create a page reference to that particular data class. Now, if I press dot, I will get my customer ID. Yes or no? Cancelling it, not saving, coming back again. Very important. You have to understand it. Try to focus. I created a section. I want to refer the customer ID property. Why? Because I am going to provide a customer ID here and hit search based on which the results will come up. But this customer ID property is part of customer table. Customer table is part of alpha hyphen data hyphen customer table class. But we are creating this section in work class. So that property is not visible at the work level. To make it visible, what do we do? We create a page which is part of work class, which is a reference to this particular table. Because of which, now I can, the property which I have dragged and dropped here, text input property, I can map it to that particular property, which is customer ID. How can I access it? Okay, dot. I know that customer page exists on work class. I click dot here now to this page reference I can access the properties of customer table class is that understood guys very important 
Yes, no. Very good. And if you guys are typing questions, you can type there. I will take that look at it in the end. Right now, I'll just focus on you know wrapping up uh, what we are trying to achieve here. So you know the flow has disconnected. So, so, uh, so I also want a label here. I don't want it to look like that. I would say provide something like you know like something like provide. Provide the customer ID for actual Perfect. I'll save this. So this is my one section where I'll be providing the customer ID. I created a section. I just dragged one text input, gave some use some layouts, and then I said this thing. The result which comes out as part of the search should be mapped in a different section. In the sense, the customer ID will be in this section. And I will be creating, just understand the design. I'll try to complete the design. You see this and you'll get a clear idea. So this section is done. So this. Okay. I'll create one more section to hold the customer results. Whenever I give a search, the results, whatever we get. For example, if I find, if I pass C1001, I will be getting Virat Kohli and the results, right? That results, I want to show it in a different section. Why? You will understand. You will understand that. So, I want to create one more section. I will do the same thing from the work class user interface category. Right click. Click on create and choose section. All that we have done so far is, you know, created, added few more records to our customer table, created a customer page, created one small section where we have mapped one property and I am trying to create one more section called customer results. Why I want to hold the results here, whatever results when I search, I want to hold it here. Why do we need this? I will help you understand, don't worry. Right now just focus how I am trying to design this. Customer results section is what I will be calling it. So it will be a slightly lengthier section, but I, the focus is on clarifying the uh, the topic in a much detailed uh, way. That's the only focus here. Okay, hopefully that helps you be able to get it. exactly similar to that section but here this is a section which will be holding the result when i pass a customer id all the results the first name the last name the age all that stuff should be coming in this section so as usual created a new section converted to full section editor so that you will get capabilities to be able to add all the you know ui elements like uh, layouts everything are visible only if you enable that people forget that you know when they open their me and asking sir i don't see whatever you are showing why right? because you had not clicked here very simple thing but as beginners we tend to forget which is common no need to worry about that exactly similar to what we did there right click here on the parent layout whatever layout is offered let this be inline grid table and i want a header for this i will call this customer results customer results just remember we are designing two different sections not just one section two different sections one which for one which passes the customer id one which you know holds the result all i did was there was an existing layout i modified that to be inline grid and i added one more layout from the structural i dragged the dynamic layout dropped it here that's it there's no coding. This is a low code platform. We do zero coding here. So far, I have I don't think we have done anything with respect to coding, right? Perfect. So I want to change the format of this layout. I want it to be left aligned. I'll choose other and I'll say start with labels on left. Perfect. That's what we have chosen there also. Perfect. Yes. Fine. So what all do I have? If I see my customer table. I have customer ID mapped there, but I want to show first name, last name, age, and city on the UI on the results. When I pass the 
ID, I should be getting first name, last name, well, this thing and results, right? The and the on the results section. To do that, what I will do, I just have to add those properties exactly how I did for the customer ID. All you have to do is see one. You have four properties. Pull this four times. That's it. Two. Three. Focus on where I am dropping. If you drop below this, it will go somewhere else. If you drop here, it will go here. So if you, if you drop exactly below this guy, you have to drop exactly below this guy. If you leave here, it go it will go here. If you want exactly below this, you have to point there, hold it to your cursor, bring it here and drop it here. Now you will see all four properties here. Okay, very simple. All I want is that those details have to be available here. Like I said, those properties are part of customer table, right? But to access that, I will need a page. That is my customer page. Dot first name. See, is this not what we did for customer ID? Yes or no, guys? Is this not what we did for customer ID? Perfect. So we will check the other property. What what should be the last name then? What should be the last name? First of all, page third last name. Very good. Do we understand why we needed this customer page? If someone is not talking, you can go on here. I can hear Ritik Roshan. Yes. That's it. Two sections. So far, added few records to the customer table. Added few records to the customer table created a customer page which references you know the customer table created under the work class created one small section which accepts customer id created another section which shows the results that's what we have done nothing fancy so far right all this we have already seen we are trying to do it once again to map and to a certain stuff perfect now the next thing is Creating a wrapper section for that. What do we mean when we say wrapper section? A section which will hold bunch of sections. This is the result section. This is the ID section. I want one more section. I will call this section. So these two sections have to be included in a third section, which is Called as we usually in Pega we call that a section. A wrapper section is a section which contains sections which will hold more sections, you know, which is used to hold sections. We will see what exactly how exactly does that help us. Same thing, right click on and say create a section. Here I want to call this as customer search section. This wrapper section I want to call it as customer search section. Right? Customer search section, a customer ID section, a result holding section, and a customer search section. Ultimately, we are planning to implement a search functionality, you know, and to do that we are using different rules which are available in Pega. Just try to understand how you can implement it. And this will be a really good exercise for you. It's like you know, a small story where we'll be building a complete feature like that.
Okay. So now I created another section which is called customer search section. In this, what I want to do is I want to be able to include those sections. All I have to do is to expand this section category here. It should show you the sections which I created. Is this the section which I created? Customer ID section? Yes, no. See, if you can just pull it, drop it here. Can I see that section here? All we did was created a wrapper section, dragged and dropped that section. You can also use, see here, embedded section. You can use this feature also. Hold this and come here and it will give you option to add one more section. So from drag and drop also you can add. From here also you can add. You can click on embedded section and it will ask you where do you want to add. So, mm -hmm. see, are you able to see this? Just drag and drop it, and then it will ask you which section do you want to import, what is the section you want to import. I know the section, I want to add the customer result section also to this. Because this is a wrapper. Am I getting that option here? See, I can click on the, draw, the down arrow here and I will see customer results section. I can drag and drop and include a section inside a section as well as I can click on embedded section and I can use this also. I will say submit. See, this is the customer results section which I wanted. Does it make sense, guys? Hold on. Please don't jump there. I'll, I'll tell, let you know. Don't worry about that. I'll delete this. So, all we have done is created a wrapper section and we have added the this section and we have another section. We can add it from drag and drop as well as from here. Let me drag from here and there. Am I able to drag and drop two sections? Yes or no, guys? Typically, when I have to perform a search, for example, here, if I have to perform a search, I should have a button, right, where I will be telling, okay, this is my query, can you search? I should have a button there. In Google also, when you try to type something, after you type, there is a search button. Yes or no? You give your query and you have to hit enter here. But in some applications, you have to, there is a search, you know, there is a search button. The same thing we will try to implement here. After the customer ID is provided, I want to search something. So I need a button to submit that. Whatever is my search, I have to submit that. I need a button, right? To do that, under the action category, I should be able to find a button. FC. Magic happens only using these palette, you know, structural, data capture, pickers, action. If you go through this very well, your UI design is, you know, you don't need anything extra. Just have to understand when you have to use what. It's all about common sense also, most of the time. Yes or no? See, all I did was drag that button from here. And dropped it in between customer ID and customer details. Am I able to see the button? Yes or no, guys? Perfect. Now, I don't want the name to be button. What should be the name for this particular button? What should be the label for this? Search, right? Makes sense. This is what it is. It's all common sense. Like, you know, as a user, what could you expect there to be? If you can answer those questions right, half of your design is already over. All you have to do is go inside a user's shoes and look at your design. Does it make sense? For example, as a user, when you try to use, is it okay for you? Like we get frustrated, right? Sometimes when the UI is not good or if the application is slow, like that. So I want some 
button capsule right uh, what is the I see search here now. All I did was change this particular button to search. Created three sections here. One for customer ID, one for customer result and one for one wrapper section which holds these two sections and a button. Anything fancy, anything not under, not able to understand, anything like that? Yes, no. Any queries so far? If you have hold it, I'll answer them in time. Right now, I want to complete this from scratch to end without zero, you know, delays. Perfect. Okay. So one thing I want is there is nothing to modify on this section. If you if you hit a record, it will give you some results. But you don't you don't need to keep these fields editable. This has to be read only. Yes or no? When you try to search something, will you be able to modify that? No. It is read only. Yeah. For example, if I look for uh, and I hit search, you can see the data, but you can't modify it. It is read only, only to for you to read. Yes or no? Right? All this you can read. You can't edit this. This is read only. Same way, when you try to hit the customer ID, you are just going to touch these records. And you are going to see here, you are not going to edit this. The results are not editable. They are read only. And we can control that. Right now, it is editable. So, to control that, what we will do? Okay. So, we have to make this particular section read only why we, we don't want to you know uh, keep this editable and that can be done if you see if you click on this particular section which you have included there is a gear icon here you can click on this gear icon and it will give you options to edit it let's see what how we can change this particular section to read only Okay, so my customer results section came in. Now under presentation tab, sorry. under the presentation tab, I should be able to get a feature. See, it tells edit options auto is what it is selling. But auto means depending upon the situation, or it's usually editable. Auto usually implies to editable, and you can change that if you click on this drop down. There is see read only always, read only, read only window and stuff like that. Right now I want to keep it read only always. Whenever I fetch the records, these records are always for reading purpose, for viewing purpose. No one is going to edit them. So I will mark them read only always submit this. All that we have done, three sections created. Right? And we have told this customer result will be read only in the third section. This wrapper section is a container for two sections and a button so far yes or no yes or no guys okay perfect now that we are done with this the next thing i want is where does the customer a section go and sit very good so a section goes inside a flow action I'm just switching into profile because I lost uh, explorer time. Let me go back. Two sections created, couple of records added to the customer table. So this section has to go and sit into a flow action. Let us create a flow action. Flow action is something which comes under process category. If you guys doubt it, you can go and check our flow action class. 
scroll down here. Okay. Right click on this and you should be able to create a flow action. Process. Right click on process create and you will see something called as flow action. Sections are something which will go under flow action. Flow action is a container for sections. Sir, no. Haven't we seen that? Perfect. So, let me call it customer search. and open okay now I know what which section it is right if you see right now we will be pointing to customer search section but internally this customer search section is a container for two other sections yes or no Right? Though we are referring this section, this section is a container for these two sections and a button. Are we not wrapping couple of sections and few controls within this section? Can we call this section as a wrapper section for these sections? That's what they will refer when you go into the project. They will call. They will tell. Okay, it is present in the wrapper section. It's not present in the individual section is what they will say. You should understand that our wrapper section is a section which is built to contain multiple sections and other controls also. Save this flow action. Just to give you understanding. Why did we create two, three different, two different sections is, for example, the only piece which has to be read, read only here is customer results. If you put everything in the one section, you can't just that particular section read only, right? For example, customer ID should be editable. The user should be able to provide ID here. So this should be editable. And this has to be read only. Because there are two different sections, on this section I can give different configuration. Is it understood guys why we went for two different sections? Yes or no? Very good. So I created a flow action. And where does the flow action go? Into a flow, right? Okay. So before we go into a flow, let's try to create an activity. This is where we will be seeing what OBJ Open has to offer for us. Like this. Before we create the flow, let's create one activity. Where does the activity grow? Go which category does activity belong to? Technical, very good. So these are something which you should be knowing by this time. When you hear the rule, you should know where exactly it goes and falls. At least for all the rules which you have already worked on. You should be knowing that. That is the expectation. Right? Only then you can build a relationship with the product. So, in as part of this activity, all we want to do is we want to perform OBJ open in the sense. All this activity we'll be doing is whenever the user gives a customer ID on the UI, that ID should be picked up by this activity and the data should be fetched from the database bring it copy it to a page and display it on the user interface that's what we want to do here how are we going to do it let us see let me call this particular activity as customer search let's call customer search activity okay i call it customer search activity i create and open this guy all i have done is three sections one flow action and one activity okay this activity right now has nothing first I want to create a page here as usual whenever you try to you know hold certain records you need page 
So let me call that page customer details. Customer details are present in which class, guys? To create a page, which method will I use? Page new, right? Very good. Page new is what I'm going to use. But this customer details should be belonging to customer table class, though this activity is created in work class exactly similar to this customer page which you have created which belongs to customer table class we have to create a page which belongs to the customer table class and once you declare a page in step you have to put it here under the pages and password and it has to belong to customer table all we did is we added one step page new customer details is that wrong i have done this okay perfect so i think it's going to the second is going to run out in 10 minutes so once the gets expired i would want i'll be sending the setting the link here so let me start here Put it on the chat. Whoever is not there on the group, you can join there, and I'll be sending the fresh link. So you can just click on this link and you can see. So right now I completed one activity. I have added one step here, which is page name. And it is of the type customer details, uh, which belongs to customer table class. So, okay. The next step is I want to perform OBJ open. Like we said, OBJ open is to fetch one single record from the database table. Right now the database table in question is the customer table server. Under that, we have all these records, right? That's where we saved all these records. Do we agree? Under that is where we have all these records. Yes or no? Guys? But also what we told is when we created that table, we told there is a key to this table. Did we specify the key to this table? The customer table has a key, right? What is the key for this table? customer id and if you see the section we have designed also is going to search based on customer id right so that means this section needs supply of that particular id whenever that id is provided that has to reach this section right the this activity needs that thing that particular uh, property Customer ID property has to reach here. How can we pass it here is something you will see. I am saying OBJ open. OBJ open will need, you know, will open you one single record from a given table. For example, the table right now we have is customer table which is mapped to customer table data class. That is what I will be choosing here. Yes or no? When you expand the OBJ open method, you will get the first thing is open class which means which table does this particular record you are trying to look up for belong to this open class means what is the table under which your records are present in is what Pega is asking you so you have to tell because in Pega you can't write the table name you have to give the class to which that paper table is mapped when you do test connection don't you see the table mapping available there database class mapping yes or no right provide that class here perfect and in the properties we have to pass the property which we are going to search based on for example for this table customer id is something which is expect way which it is expecting if i do dot here i should be able to see that am i able to see the customer id i 
and here the value on the clipboard can be fetched from the customer page yes or no the customer page has the customer id see am i able to get that primary means whichever class you are creating this activity for example work class the primary page for work class is pi work page do we agree whenever we create a work object or a case or a uh, or a or a work object we see that a pi work page gets generated for this particular class and it's available on clipboard have we seen that so whenever you use primary in your activity that you are telling that whatever is the primary page for that particular class for work class it's usually pi work page but still i am using primary because wherever you create you need to have understanding of what is primary all about that is why i am giving you that understanding and under that primary page there is a customer page which is what you have created here customer under work class is or not if we create this customer page using which we map the entire user interface the same property customer id property which is mapped on customer id section i am using here in the sense i am passing whenever the user provides that value i am passing that value here how are these two linked i will show you don't worry about it right now just understand that to fetch that particular record from table we are using customer id and i am passing it here will you be able to get this in one shot no you will have to do it by yourself you will face lot of challenges only after that you will get this not all the developers who are being hired today understand this and can explain this they won't be able to but if you understand do it by yourself and learn this thing if you explain just this flow you know how exactly this is done i don't think anyone will stop you from getting into any company you know just have to understand what we are trying to do here and how exactly can it but to do it you should be doing on your laptop we'll be it will, the session might be expiring in 2 minutes if it expires i will be sending you the new link on the group if you guys are not part of the group just join there so that i'll be able to okay, we do have still have 4 minutes now perfect so i completed the obj open part all we are doing here is passing the customer id and we are telling OB this obj open method will open that record and fetch the results and bring it on this page because this is the page on which we want to access it all it is doing is obj opens job is to go into database take this customer id on this table and say with this id do you have anything is what it is going and doing and asking db if the db finds any record it will be sending it back and then we will be mapping that to the user interface let us see that so right now i created a obj open now once the data is fetched i also want to copy that to the primary page the right now the data is being fetched on this page the data is available here but to be able to display i need to put it on the primary page it is nothing but the customer the cust page which we have created right so yes page copy this is another method which i am introducing today so the agenda was today to understand you know how obj open what is obj open and what is page copy we are trying to see through example how exactly we will be using it and what are its uses uses so this particular page page copy method is only it's like you know when you go to a uh, xerox center what do you do you photocopy you give a page and exactly similar page is returned to you same thing is done here you tell from where to where from cust details because when you fetch the records on obj open the records came and sat here in the sense the results for example you passed virat kohli's id let us say here whatever you have you passed 10001 and virat kohli 35 and delhi came and sat on you know customer details page but we are not using customer details page to show on ui if you know we are using cust page to show on ui yes or no if you see the mapping here on this page what are we using here on each property cust page right cust page dot first name cust cust page dot first name last name doesn't have any value we have to update it that we are doing it from here are you able to understand guys 
Hold on. So, I think we have joined it. This customer table, when we did, when we created it, we told that customer ID will be the key for this particular table. Anything you have to pull from this particular table, you have to pass an ID, whatever ID it is. You can declare age also as ID, but something which is unique has to be the ID. It is like your roll number, whatever is your name, only based on your roll number you are identified in your uh, exam sheet. For example, there can be 10 Srinivas in your class, but based on the uh, roll number only they can identify you. Same thing is being done here. Customer ID is like that roll number. Based on that roll number, we are pulling details. This can be Srinivas, this can be Srinivas, this can be Srinivas, this also can be Srinivas. But these IDs are unique, right? Going further from where we went, so someone asked me like how exactly are you fetching that? So our table has a customer ID which is a unique ID based on which we are fetching records and these records we are passing in different places in different ways. First we created a customer page which references that particular table, right? And we use that to map the user interface. The customer ID is mapped, I'm sorry. Can you see my screen now? Perfect. Perfect. So, coming back. So, customer ID is a unique ID using which we are going to extract record from the table. All we are trying to implement today is a functionality where based on the customer ID, you should be able to fetch the results. But these results are sitting in a table. What is that table? That is one database table, for example. The customer table which we have right now here is that table which is holding those records. These records, for example, when I pass C1001, I should be able to see first name, last name, age and city for that particular customer ID. That's what we want to achieve. To achieve that, we designed a section. We told, okay, I'll be passing my customer ID through this section. Okay, and then I'll be maintaining my results on this results section and I created a wrapper section. In that wrapper section I told, I dragged and dropped my customer ID section which is editable where I'll be passing my field for customer ID and on the, on the next step I have added a button which on click of it I'll be fetching those results where I'll be uh, saying I want to search. Okay, and the results should be populated here. And I have marked these fields read only because I don't want to make them editable. No one should be able to edit that. You should only be able to see this result. And along with this, I created a flow action to contain or to hold this particular section, which I'll be mapping on my flow later. Along with this, I am also creating an activity where I am creating a page, which is of customer table, right? And then what I am saying, I want to, I am creating a new page and I am doing the OBJ open. What is this OBJ open doing? The OBJ open is accepting the customer ID. Where is this customer ID uh, being passed? When the user provides the customer ID on the user UI on the section, that customer ID has to be passed here. But how are this activity and the section linked? Uh, we will see that. We haven't gone there yet. Right now we are just preparing. This is like masala we are preparing for biryani. Right now this is just masala. We will try to link it and we will complete the biryani. Don't worry. Okay. Now, and then what I did, I have created the OBG open using which I will be extracting this record. Okay. This step 2 will be fetching that record, but the record is sitting on customer details page. But if you see the results section, it is not 
speaking property from customer details page it is speaking from customer page so i have to copy those details or results which i am receiving onto customer details page how can i do that i can use a method called page copy this is exactly similar to photo copy if we do yes or no with me guys so far okay so let us specify where do i want to copy this i want to copy this into my primary dot first page the customer page right the customer page i want to copy into my customer page let us see all we have done here is just added three steps might look fancy to you but it is very simple page you already know page open uh, obj open just to fetch one record page copy to copy whatever was there on that page onto the page which is being displayed for the user that's what we are trying to do now the next the big question the big question is okay sir you added this activity but how are this activity and that section linked will be a question where do we want to perform this action if you go to my wrapper section customer search section is my wrapper section on click of search we want to perform that operation right customer provided this id when do you want to go and look for that record when you a user clicks on search we want to go and look for that record in the table yes or no so on search on the button you get lot of options see when i click on that button from the wrapper section i will see the action step canceling it coming back again i am back into my wrapper section now that i completed my activity i want to see what can be achieved you know as part of this so on this search button i can perform lot of operations for example from the search button i came to actions on that search button create an action set canceling coming back again click on this gear icon on your button click on actions there are three types general presentation and action click on actions click on create an action set and what is this it is a event right in user interface whenever you click you call it a event whenever you hover you call they call it a event same way search button is being clicked so it's a click event click on add event and say it's a click event it's a mouse event you are performing is yes our do we agree guys right click perfect add an action what action do you want to do as part of that do you see anything telling that uh, run this section or something no there is a option called display refresh remember this on click add an action display refresh what this will do if you click on this it will give you So what do you want to you want to refresh this section is what it is asking yes i want to refresh this section let us see and it is giving you option to choose an activity when the user clicks this particular search button the peda is telling on click of this search what do you want to do i want to run this activity i can point to that activity am i able to point to that activity are you with me guys canceling coming back again from the search button action tab i want to create a action set add an event on click i want to run that activity this is where i am linking the activity which i have created and the action i am doing on the ui come here add an action under that display refresh this will refresh the section at the same time it will call the activity customer search activity does it make sense guys very important how do you perform processing on click of a button don't we know that how we are doing it save this too complex guys or how are you guys feeling about this what should i take this sir yes no
Yeah, okay, no, don't worry about it. All that you have to do is like just try this out by yourself and this will solidify in your head. Don't worry about that. We'll be doing a lot of this stuff. So, don't worry about that. All we have done today, if you look at it, added two records to this table, created one page, created one section with one property, created another section with four properties, created another section by dragging and dropping those two sections and one button. And we created a flow action to hold that particular section. And we created an activity with just three steps. First step, you already know, we are creating a new page. Second step, we are doing OBG open. This is something which will open a, it's as good as opening a Almira and pulling out something like that. It's just doing that part. Going into this particular table. Pulling out based on this customer ID. If it has anything, it is pulling out and giving it to you. Sir, no. That's what we have implemented so far. And in the next step, what we are saying, can you also make a Xerox of it? Because that Xerox is not available for us when we are trying to show a user interface. The, the the page we are allowed to use in exam is only this page because this is the page they are accepting. This page they are not accepting. Yes or no? Are we, are we expecting only that page? Same thing we are telling there. Nothing fancy. It might seem like that to you. Once you guys are able to design, you will be like, what is uh, this Bacha requirement is what we are looking at, you know? Perfect. At the, the purpose is to make sure like, you know, this kind of goes and wets in your head, you know, kind of sits in your brain, the concept is clear. If you understand this, understanding other sections and their designs is very easy. That's the objective here. Perfect. Now that we are done with this thing, where should my flow action go and sit, guys? Very good. Let me create a flow. Same thing under the work class, process category, create, right click, click on flow. Of course, this is my customer search flow, right? Customer search flow. Create and open. Where does the flow action go and sit, guys? Inside a flow. On the connector, leaving the assignment shape. Yes or no? Right? Go and point to that particular flow action, customer search flow action. All I have done is created a flow. Canceling this. Right click and create a flow. Pega automatically gave me a start shape, end shape, and an assignment shape. Now I have to configure where the flow action should go. Certain. I'm saying the flow action is already created and it is customer search flow action. Running this. Make sense, guys? Yes, no. Let's try to run this. customer search so No, 
the section which it is rendering is draft can be on it. So let's do it for This is pointing to my new floor. And this is section of search section here. What is it? What is it in this one? Perfect. So now we are able to see what we are supposed to see. Sorry, no. But the UI is not looking good. I'm sorry about that. Don't worry about that. Let's try to see. Let me just pass some value and see. I can see the zero one. And let me fix it. Am I able to get Virat Kohli, 35 and Delhi? Yes. Yes or no? In the same way, all that we are doing here is okay. Let's try to understand from Tracer also. How do we open it? Here, if I pass, for example, 9001, I should be expecting this one. C hyphen 9001. Okay, now when I do search, let us see what was passed. See? Do you see the, uh, you know, tracer? It tells that particular step has failed. If you see, the execution has happened, has started. When I clicked search, my customer search activity has been called. 
pizarro this is not my activity see activity begin we are in step one here here is my step two my step two is obj open do we agree in step two if you see what it is doing it is if you see it is actually passing a query let us see what is that query. see it is telling from the table customer table select age this thing this thing this thing this thing this thing where customer id as see the customer id didn't get passed it's going blank Let's try to see what has gone wrong. We'll try to pass it again and check. No way. So if you see the step 10, it is telling unable to open the inst instance 9001C. Do you see what has passed here? 9001C-1001. These two have been passed. That is why it has not been able to fetch that. Does it make sense, guys? It has failed. But if you see our user interface is not smart then right it doesn't look okay if you pass some wrong value it is not throwing me any error do you see any error here guys no error which is not fine if i if that id is wrong i should see id is not available or something like that yes or no right makes sense it should only show me if, it, if the ID is not there, it should tell me. But we have not added logic for that. Right now, we are just trying to search. If it is a valid record, it should give me something. Same thing will happen. If we discard this and create one more flow, and you will see how exactly OBG Open will fetch the record. So, no. Now let us see. C hyphen nine zero zero one is what I am passing. So yeah, it should look much better, but I don't know there is something wrong. That's fine. Don't worry about that. So when I pass hit search here, just see what happens at the bottom. Nishant P twenty six Mysore dot fetch, and it is read only. Yes or no? Just displaying the data. Now we understood. Two things to understand. First thing, what happens when you do OBJ open? When you do OBJ open, Pega is creating a SQL query in the backend and it is calling the database table. Yes or no? Data dot PR alpha data and the for customer table to this. The test table is mapped. The, customer, the data class is mapped to this table. Yes or no? All they are doing is they are writing a query in the backend. This is not your headache. You just have to use OBJ open. Pega is writing this for you. It is telling fetch me these, 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 these properties from this table where customer ID is equal to 9001. You are not coding this. You are just telling do OBJ open in my activity. If you see, step 2 is OBJ open in this activity. It is starting here, ending on step 7 where it already got the results. If you see the results are available here in 7, you, if you open customer details, the results are here. Nishan, this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. But customer details is not the page which we have referenced on the results section, right? We have referenced it using cust page. Yes or no? Right? To map that, we told, do a page copy. If you open the step 9, customer details, page has been copied to customer page. Yes or no? See, it is successfully completed. It successfully completed that. If I open the PI work page now, you will see, let me open the clipboard and access the PI work page. PI work page is the primary. If you remember, we gave that as the Primary page dot cust page. If you should be able to find that. Here you are page. Cust page. See what cust page will have. Nishant Mysore 26. Just a photocopy of what cust details have. Are we able to understand, guys, how to use OBJ open and page copy in an activity and map it to the user interface? Yes or no? 
slightly lengthier class, but the objective was to clarify this piece. But there is, of course, there is a lot of improvement here, right? If we are passing a blank, uh, uh, unknown number, it is it is showing us whatever it wants. For example, if I pass anything random, you know, if I search, see, nothing is coming, which means I should tell that this customer ID is not available, right? Rather than telling if, if they look up for a uh, for a student in your in your register who is not present, your application tells that the student is not present rather than showing this blank field. Does it make sense? Yes, no. So that is our next requirement. At runtime, how can we decide if the customer if customer is not available, what to do? If it is available, if he is available, what to do? Is something we have to do. If you guys, we can continue that today and we can wrap that up. What do you say? I leave it up to you guys. How much time do you have? I'm not sure how much time do we have. That's okay. I'll try to continue and complete that part also if that makes sense to you guys. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So the next piece is trying to at runtime making sure you know this particular details are not you know if it is not available showing a message telling that hey this customer does not exist. Does it make sense? And also not showing this customer results. If the user is not existing, there is no point in showing him showing him this blank fields. Is it? Is it there? No, right. Okay, so for that we added py case management default. If you see our initial flow class, in that I have shown why exactly we get that. There is a flow class in my YouTube channel. You can use that. You will be able to understand what exactly we did as part of that. It's very simple configuration. Just to make sure you know the details get the current section gets popped up when we try to run the flow. Which is mapped. By default, it picks up some out of the box, which is incorrect for our case. Perfect. So the next thing is adding a check there, telling that if the field is not available, if the uh, the record is not available in database, just show a message telling that this particular record is not existing. I'm asking you guys again. If it is too much, we can continue it tomorrow. If not, we can continue it today. What do you guys want to do? We'll continue. Yes, no, perfect, okay, just don't want to like, you know, overdo what we are trying to do, that's it, okay, perfect, so I'm assuming everyone is okay. To do that, uh, you know, we need a flag, flag in the sense something, which an uh, indicator which will tell you whether this particular record is there or not. To do that, what I will do, I will add a property into my data model here, right, in the data model. I will say add another field which will hold true or false something like true or false I will call it customer exists if the customer exists it's true if not it is false in my data data model in the customer table I am going to add it this has to be true or false true or false rolls up under a data type category which is called as boolean boolean means 0 or 1 true or false like that I added this particular property to this particular customer table. Okay, save this. Let us redesign the section. Let me go go to my um, section now to the wrapper section. In the wrapper section, I want to redesign. What do I want to do? Then I search, and if I don't find it, I want to show a message telling that. This guy doesn't exist. Make sense? This guy doesn't exist is what I want to show. To do that, I just add a label. I can find label in data capture. Something like or maybe data display. Yes. Okay. So I want a label. Where should I show that label? When I click search and if he is not available, I want to show a label telling that 
this guy doesn't exist okay the customer doesn't exist i can add i just dragged the label from data display added it below search and now i want to change i don't want sample text here i want some custom text text something which makes sense to us yes or no on the settings you can open it and you will see sample text there just tell customer id doesn't exist Like just one label, one message you are giving. Perfect. And then, if you want it in red, you can do it in red also in presentation. And you can do go and you know, add some CSS to it. Like this. That's okay. You can see that later, but if I have to add it, that's not the problem. So just like. That's fine. That's not very important. Right? You can see that here. Okay. So all that we did was we changed the label for this particular ID, and we called it customer ID doesn't exist. Okay. Whenever I see uh, a customer doesn't exist, I want to show this message, and I don't want this particular section also to be visible. We'll see how we can configure that also. Okay. So to do that, what I will do, if you remember, we took a flag just a couple of minutes before. and i can add a condition based on that right if the customer is available then i don't want to show this message so no if the customer exists should i show this message no right i don't want to show i have to add that i can add it in multiple ways or expression let us say i want it using the expression and i will say if customer कंडीशन इज वैलिड दिस Here I come. So, right, see, so, it shows you this. And if it is not right, it won't say it will throw you an error. See, is it right? If the customer exists, is not equal to true in the sense, if the customer the value is false for this thing, show it. Or you can also say. Sir, no. both are same, right? You can say not equal to true or is equal to false. Does it make sense? Because customer exists is a property which only holds true or false. Do we agree, guys? Perfect. So I just gave that condition. How will we map this? We'll see that. Don't worry about that. Right now we have just given that condition. Okay. In the same way. the results layout also should be visible this guy should be only visible if only visible if when should this be visible exists right you can same condition dot customer page dot customer exists equal to equal to Are you ready to take the right? See, perfect. Yes, perfect. Submit. See. But how will the system know what is the value for that? Like you know, you specified it here, but do we have a value here for that? Record. See, right now customer exists is blank. Is there a value for here? For the customer exists. No. So how will the system know? 
to do that we need some small tweak in the design we'll see, we'll see how we are going to do it all we have done is you know added one flag true or false flag to the table and added that particular conditioning on top of the label as well as section if it is true show the section if it is false show the label that's what we have told here does it make sense perfect so let us assume this was understood okay label condition also was set this section condition also was set both of this are perfect yeah. done yeah. okay before I load the class of things I told you, I will tell you later. Okay. Now, let us go back to our activity. This is where we need to tweak our activity. All we have to do here is, we have to add a few changes. Why? Because the value for those flags is not available right now. To add that, let us do something. Let's click here, add a step. Here. And add a step after page new. I want to do a property set. What is this property set? Property set is used to see our activity class. We have understood it in a much detailed level. It will be used to set values to properties. That's what we are going to do. And I know which property is there in question here. Right. I want to do a property set. And in this property set, all I want to do is Set dot set dot dot I'll explain you what is this jump. Enable conditions. Right. And then I'm to enable these conditions. And OBJ open, we are trying to open this record. If it is not existing, I want to jump. What does it do? If the step status. If you see, if the record is not existing, we saw the step status was failing. Yes or no? Did we see that? So whenever the step status fails there, I want to exit this activity. I want to leave this activity. That means I don't want to continue any further. Does it make sense? Yes. Hold on. I need to understand what you can let me design this. Complete the design process and then I will want to see. Okay. I completed that. This is over. Exit the activity while this is not there. Perfect. And if it is there, I also want to
Let us see what this does and we will try to understand it. In that detail. All we have do, I am doing is existing activity, I am modifying it. I will help you understand what and how exactly does it fit in. Okay. Let's see the UI and then come back here and understand in detail what exactly will be achieved here. So, so So, when I try to run this, let's try to look up for Virat's record. If you see, customer ID does not exist already is popping up here. Is it good? Is it a good sign? No, right? It shouldn't. If you go and check, I left it on purpose so I can come and explain that to you later. If you go and check on the label, there is run visibility condition on client enabled which means when you are trying to perform any operation only then this condition will visibility condition will be evaluated you have to uncheck this if you want if you don't want that to appear by default submit so i kept it as it is on purpose so you can understand that now let us try to rerun the flow Still, it is coming in that sense. The condition is not being set properly. This is it. Instead of this, we will say. That's fine. I don't think it would be it. If you see here, good question. If there is any error, for example, it will stop you. For example, if I say it will give three equals errors. Okay, then I will come this and it will apply to see it is not available here anymore. If I if I have to pass here now, if I try to say say and submit, if I say so it should show me error again. See, you see this. It doesn't let you say. You can use double equals or single equals. No issue. Well, to validate it, just open the is false. Visibility condition is set. Perfect. Let us use this one. Okay. In this one, I don't need to. This one. Okay. Run. Oh, I'm not having this. I have to run the customer service. Do I see the label or the result section here? No, right? So let us pass one ID and see. I'm passing C1001. Let me turn on the tracer. Save. And capture it. This is how we will be understanding in detail what exactly is happening. Now let me click on save. See? Do you see that? Because I passed an ID which was not valid, it threw me this. What happened? Let's try to see the tracer. If you see, the activity started here, line number 12. Here was page, customer details, right? Created customer details page. And it performed the customer details page OPG open. If you see on QI work page, it has set the property. If I open this and I open the QI work page, you will see control that 
customer exists is set to false. Yes or no? What we are doing even before before we are checking, we are setting the property to false. Right? In the second step, the first thing we are doing is setting the property to false. Yes or no? The property set false. In this activity, second step is setting the property to false. After that, I am performing this OBJ open. If the OBJ opens, step status failed, I am jumping out of this activity. Let us go and compare it with activity so that we can understand. Hey, Pega, can you create me this page? Sure, sir. I am doing it. Hey, Pega, can you set this property to false? Sure, sir. I am setting this to false. Hey, Pega, can you look up for this record for the customer ID I have passed? Yeah, I went and looked up, but there was nothing there. Oh, that means the step status has failed. How do I know? After executing this step, the jump the jump conditions will be evaluated. First, it will do OBJ open. Whatever is the result, based on that, it will evaluate. Has the step status failed? Yes. The sub has failed here, right? Has the sub has failed here? Yes. That means the customer does not exist. Yes or no? The customer ID we are looking for does not exist. And which means that property has to be set to false, which we have already done in step 2. Does it make sense, guys? We set it to false because once we evaluate if it is there, we are marking it true. In step 4, we are marking it true. Once we figure out that it is there, the next step is marking the test true. However, in third step, we will know if it is there or not. If it is there only, then it will go for step number 4 or else it will jump from here. It will tell the step test has failed, the activity stops here. We are not going to execute any further. Only if the fourth step pass, we will be able to see the record. Let us verify that also. Right? No harm, right? We are doing anyways we are debugging. Let's debug and understand is it working fine at all? Right? This one and I think this is coming as part of you know the existing Cosmos UI. I'll see how I can you know get rid of it. Don't worry about it. I know the UI is not looking. It's crappy UI. Don't worry about that. You don't see the result for coming up here, right? Let us see what is going on. Run visibility on client disabled. I have done that for that. Because I think I have not seen my job. It's fine. Zero 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 seven. Let us try to pass by C one and then let's turn on the tracer and tracer. Strange. Though the records are coming up, if you see the SQL results are telling 
OBG open is successful. The records are coming up, but the section is not getting rendered. Yes or no? Are you seeing the issue here? If you see, the customer details is populated with Virat, Kohli and stuff like that. But you need that, it is not getting updated. Let us see report if the page is getting created. Let's go to our page. Control F. Now see. First page is getting populated, right? Even with this, we are not able to see the UI. Let us try to understand. I think we do have 10 more minutes left. Let's try to do it as soon as possible. See, if you see that property is not the customer exists property is not available on this thing because of which that issue is happening. Let us see what we have messed up here. So we can do All you have to do is this. All I did is just move it from up to down because this page copy was overriding it. It is fine, no problem. I think now it should work like a charm. Not the car exists. Okay, perfect. Now this should work. Let us try. Do we see that, guys? Okay. So the issue was in the activity what I was trying to do, I was trying to, you know, uh, do a OBJ open, fetching the records. If it is not there, it is working fine. We saw the message was coming. After that, I was doing a page copy, which was overriding whatever was there. And this property was getting overridden. Though it was being said, it was overridden by whatever was there on that page. So I moved it just below this page copy and the value was being set on the clipboard because of which these details was it understood guys how to use obj open and page copy to design your user interface and how you can use that in activity yes no 